bit here. Uh, I know you've all signed up for, many of you have signed up for this. Uh, there's going to be a meal out there tonight. We'll finish here at quarter ten to six, pack up, and then at quarter past six, we're going to have a meal out there. For those of you who want to come, we've already got the list, and if you're not on the list, then you're still welcome. Um, and yeah, there'll be a small charge, 10, 15 pounds, and if it's over that, I'll cover it, because that's my way of giving back. I've made enough money from this workshop to cover my costs, so I want to give a little back. So just clearing that up. Um, right. Uranus was discovered in the 1760s. Neptune was discovered in the 1840s. Pluto in the 1930s. Chiron in the 1970s, 1980s. Prior to these times, we had no knowledge of these planets. We had no knowledge of these outer planets before 1760. So the archetypes as represented by these planets, we did not know them. Before 1930, no one was really comfortable with psychology. Before 1840, no one knew about, there was no real sort of major issues around addiction, neuroses. The great artists were few and far between. Photography and film didn't exist. Before 1760, human individual rights weren't a big feature. It was only the American French revolutions and the writings of people like John Locke who, who opened up this world around the time of the discovery of Uranus. Right. In 2023 and 2024, Pluto is moving from Capricorn, feminine, into Aquarius, masculine. In 2025 and 2026, Neptune is moving from Pisces, feminine, into Aries, masculine. In 2025 and 2026, Uranus is moving from Taurus, feminine, into Gemini, masculine. In mid-25 to early 26, Saturn is moving from Pisces, feminine, into Aries, masculine. The four outer planets of our solar system, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto, the ones that take the longest of times to make a transit, what I call the beasts of the solar system, are all changing sign, if not exactly at the same time, then simultaneously, close to each other. And they're all moving from feminine into masculine. This has never happened before. Firstly, it hasn't happened because we didn't understand the existence of Uranus, Neptune and Pluto until 250 years ago. Pluto hasn't completed one orbit since it was discovered yet. Neptune's only just discovered, been completed one orbit since it was discovered. Uranus has, only, Uranus has completed three orbits since it was discovered. We're still developing our archetypes. Um, so, these, this has never happened before, and if it did happen before in prehistory, I've, with these, this computer program, I can fast track stuff. I can move stuff back like a thousand years in a minute. So, I've gone back 10,000 years looking for anything like this. I've never found it. This has never happened before. This is a first time. So let's get the mechanics out the way. All of the big four are going to change sign. And there's a particular crunch point around... Uh, I've got it here. Um, yeah. In... The third week of February 2026, Neptune will move into Aries at the end of January 2026. Saturn will move into Aries in the middle of February 2026. There will be a Saturn-Neptune conjunction 
at zero degrees of Aries, the very start of the horoscope, the very start of the zodiac, Saturn conjunct Neptune in mid-February 2026. At this time, Uranus will move into Gemini in April 2026. Pluto will be in early Aquarius at this time. Pluto moving from Capricorn into Aquarius. When Pluto moved into Libra from Virgo back in the late 60s, early 70s, it was the start of what we call the divorce generation. It was the beginning of the end of the nuclear family then. When Pluto moved into Scorpio in the early 1980s, we said, oh, that's, that's going to be um, nuclear war. And what we saw was the downfall of the nuclear weapon race. And we didn't look, see, we thought it would be an openness to sexuality and we got HIV. When Pluto moved into Sagittarius in 1996, we thought, okay, this is the end of religion. And what we got was fundamentalism. When Pluto moved into Capricorn, in 2008, we said, okay, this is the beginning of the end of world government. What do we get? Corporate control. And the, and, the, and the monsters of America, China, Russia, the big states, the unwieldy ones. Now Pluto's about to move into Aquarius. I mean, on the positive side, this is the beginning of the age of Aquarius. It really is. This is the start of the age of Aquarius, and I am not going to burst in a song promise. <laughs> but this is it. This is the start of the age of Aquarius over the next few years, two or three years. And it is the start of redefining our whole idea of community. On a positive way, I can see how this is going to bring an end to nation states, an end to impenetrable borders, and the start of a much more openness to the global community. That's the idealistic way of looking at Pluto in Aquarius. More realistically, we're going to see the remaining power blocks, especially the corporates, the really big corporations, and the military blocks fighting to maintain control over the population, dumbing people down, accelerating the use of AI, of processed foods, and of even augmenting the human genome, as I referred to yesterday. This is the scary stuff. There is a potential that we end up in a kind of um, Terminator or Judge Dredd style community in 20 years' time. That doesn't bear thinking about. But that's just Pluto in Aquarius. Neptune's going to move into Aries. When Neptune moved into Capricorn, well, I mean, that was 40 odd years ago nearly, I remember thinking, oh, this is interesting. This is going to bring a dissolving of, 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 of nation states, of global corporates. And instead, we got the number of prominent figures decreasing on the world stage, but certain figures really escalated. When Neptune moved into Aquarius about 25 years ago, I remember thinking, okay, this is the start of the environmental revolution. Instead, we got the opposite. We got the big improvement in pollution, chemical intolerance, food intolerance. When Neptune moved into Pisces 12 years ago, I remember thinking, surely this has got to be better than Neptune in Aquarius because Neptune rules Pisces. What do we see in the last 12 years? We see the ruination of the seas, the increase of pollution, a toxic, a toxic environment on the planet. And it's not just at an, uh, an environmental, physical level. There's this toxicity of the mind. People have become dumbed down. And now Neptune's going to move into Aries, which is the start of a whole new 160-year cycle. <laughs> I'd love to speak of it in a positive way because Neptune in Aries could give a whole fresh start to the idea of individual human rights, the rights of the individual. It could certainly lead to a spiritual revolution 
where we become much more independent in our own belief systems and our relationship with spirit and the divine, however you see the divine as being. It can also lead to a complete dissolving, Neptune, of individual integrity. Where the whole idea of human rights goes out the window and we get treated as a homogenous block or lump of people. Uranus is about to leave Taurus. When Uranus moved into Aries 12 years ago, he started squaring Pluto in Capricorn. I remember thinking at that time, this is going to be the struggle between the need for global control, as symbolized by Pluto in Capricorn, versus the need for individual human rights, as symbolized by Uranus in Aries. And it kind of manifested to that, but the government basically won on that one. We've got CCTV, the forerunners of AI, and surveillance. And I'm not criticising these things, don't get me wrong. I'm not a conspiracy nut and I'm not a paranoid freak. And I don't mind that this country's got four times more CCTV than most other countries. Because I'm, I'm okay about that, I've got nothing to hide. I don't exactly trust the government, but I've got nothing to hide, so I'm not bothered if they see me out there. Because it's better that than not being watched and when there's something bad going on, as we can see in other countries of the world, specifically in this last 48 hours. Yeah. Uranus moved into Taurus five years ago, and I remember thinking, ah, quickly, buy Bitcoin. This is the end of the banks. This is the end of organised, structured financial systems. This is the start of a global currency the end of interest rates, the end of individual currency trading. Because with Bitcoin, there's no banks and no bankers and every transaction is public. And that hasn't quite worked out. <laughs> Still around, lots of crypto around. But I can't stop advising people to buy crypto in this last six to eight months. It's still there, but it's become more elitist. Uranus is going to leave Taurus. Now Uranus isn't comfortable in Taurus. Uranus rules Aquarius. And Aquarius is square to Taurus, so that's not a comfortable.